I would be among the first to admit that we made mistakes in government. I will be among the first to admit that there was corruption within previous Antigua Labour Party administrations. But I have to admit that the corruption that exists today under the UPP regime makes corruption under the previous ALP administration. Child's play, my dear people. I mean, this thing is exclusive. There will be no job losses under the Labour Party administration. While there's moonlight and music and love and romance I now turn to the water shortage that has plagued this country for some time And I say to you tonight that leadership matters I say to you tonight that the water shortage that our people have been experiencing is an issue that belongs to a different age. And I say too, that we have made positive steps in order to resolve the water problem. And I guarantee you that within 14 days, there will be increased water supply in this country. Let's face music and dance. A cornerstone of our general election campaign was the provision of affordable housing. Indeed, we promised 500 homes in 500 days. And we said to you that you would have gotten 500 homes in 500 days. Those with little or no vision said that it could not be done. Well, as your Prime Minister, I say to you that it can be done and that it shall be done. Let's face the music and dance. Let's face the music and dance. I mean, this thing is exclusive. Labor Talks with your host, the executive of the Antigua Barbuda True Labor Party. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Via Cornwall Bird III, chairman of the Antigua Barbuda True Labor Party, and your co host of this program, True Labor Talks. I'm in studio with Lionel Nedwell. Nedwell, say hello to the listening public. Yes, good afternoon to the general public. It's good to be here with you again today. There's a lot, lots to talk about, and, and we intend to just give you the full scope of what's been going on and you know how these guys intend to run our business and what the general public or even the international public is thinking about us so they said there's lots to talk about so let's get started without any further delay yes well as we said we have a lot of um, topics to discuss and one of the issues we want to really get into is just the general mood of Antigua and Barbuda in the country right now um, a lot of people that who have voted the electorate, you know, you usually go through the stage where they say they have their regrets and um, if they could take back the vote and they want to chop off the vote and bring in all of that nonsense. Well, you wear what you buy. Hmm. Don't bother chopping off your fingers because we have use for that finger the next time around. Absolutely. However, those who went to vote for more work, more opportunity, more... Um, transparency and accountability in government on election day mm -hmm. you're not going to get it mm -hmm. you will have to wait until the next five years or whenever the prime minister calls the election to vote for another individual or party in your constituency what we are saying is that right now everybody's just saying one thing oh 
they just listen they are nothing for say they're just listening to hear what people are saying and what how people moving and what they're acting um i don't know if it makes much sense if you elected something then after you you go on the motorcade you have the 20 dollar t-shirt with um safe with labor and you actively campaign overtly mm-hmm. to support mm-hmm. or to get that party into power mm-hmm. now you're saying you're just going to remain quiet and just observe i don't know the sense in that because before things get worse you should be active to try to stay your party or your representative on the right path but that is just the way it is in antigua and barbuda there are several scandals that have um come to light after the election on the 21st of march and people that are saying they're just listening and watching that's good but you need to do more you need to ask for more transparency and more accountability by the government concerning the passports in the virgin the saint vincent that the police are doing an investigation on an active investigation right now we want to know if they are doing an active investigation concerning antiguan and passports then what is the Antigua and Barbuda doing about their own, their own investigation? Yes, right. and hopefully they can sink and, and work on the same thing with the sanction authorities. But what mm-hmm. I will say at this point in time is that, yes, um, that scandal has broken and several others on the way. But we are saying to the Antigua and Barbuda people that you need to be held accountable because you voted for these individuals Knowingly. and know that there's another scandal that is breaking that will affect you because you have an Antiguan and Barbudan passport it will affect us going into other countries ports of entry Nedwell what do you have to say on that yes, yeah. the, the, the quietness around here is really startling you know it's extremely quiet people are not saying anything it's uh you know it's a situation that you know you can't even determine what's really going on um, the, the people I realize and I believe realize that, um, you know, they made a mistake in what they did. And um, they, that's why they're not saying anything right now there. If you notice, they've been promised so many things from the two, 2014 election and not one of those things materialized. And the people closed their eyes and just swallowed that and went back and do the same thing. And that within itself, you know, caused uh, some sort of silence there. Saying, well, look, we, you know, we know that we, we did what we weren't supposed to do, but um, that's what happened. Let's see how it works out. You know, where this is a horrible thing talking about. Like, this is people's life you're talking about. It's the livelihood of people. You can't see how it works out. This thing is supposed to be planned and projected and ready and all that good stuff. You know, not that it is a test case. You're testing to see and you know you had the opportunity to do the right thing and go down the right path and the, the, the right things would have happened. But the people chose not to go down that path there. I, I really, up to that, this point in time, I'm confused why that's the <laughs> part that they use. Yeah, but you and one or two others. Yeah, yeah, After my right. experience in um, 2014, <laughs> I already sized up the state of the mental um the mental state of the electorate yeah and they are hell bent on not giving themselves the best option or the best yeah. policies yeah. out of loyalty to party which has been disloyal to them there's nothing worse <laughs> than disloyalty but blind obedience and loyalty to, to an organization that doesn't have it for you too. that's have your well-being at, at the heart that's right. that's but right. uh, you ask them or you tell them but your party hasn't done this he hasn't that they want to make an argument they want to curse you they want to fight with you <laughs> so that is what i experienced the last time 2014 i'm not surprised on this situation yeah, you the minds of men and women seldom change except in circumstances where there's a big upheaval and then you find that they are willing to try something else because they have the opinion that anything is better than what we presently have. So and I did not feel that um, on our campaign. Throughout. Yeah. I expected I the, 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 the candidates, the, the electorate to hear our message and mm-hmm. to vote accordingly. That's but right. I didn't hear that same just disgust in yep. the present government. Like I heard 
when the government changed in 2004. Okay. So I am not surprised, but it is just amazing to see that so many went and supported a government that really has not performed. Okay. I am I, not I'm feeling it either way, but... You know, let common sense prevail there. You, you see what you've been getting. You see what's been happening. And it's the uh, opportunity that you get once every five years. It's not that you're getting it two weeks down the road again to, 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 to do something about it. Yeah. You're going to have to sit out five years there in order. You know, so you have when you make that decision, you have to make it, uh, you know, meaningful there. You can't just decide, uh, look, uh, make a try any old thing. It's not like that. Yeah. You know, how, you know, and another thing, how did the people put themselves last in this whole scenario? Mm -hmm. You know, like, well, whatever happened when we drop, so wherever I'll get, we take something of that nature. It doesn't sound right, really. It doesn't yeah. seem right to me. This is something, you see, this whole thing is like a chain to me, Via. Mm -hmm. And each individual is a link. Yeah. And that link has its work. And if that link doesn't hold up its own, its end, the whole thing falls apart. And this is what's happening in Antigua. You know, I have a bunch of people who are not voting. Uh, let me put it more bluntly, because then I will have some support on, on, on the next topic that's probably coming up. I do have a lot of people out there who are selling their votes. Yeah. They just sell it, and then they openly will tell you, Boy, so where are you going to give you? So where are we going to give you? We're going to give you a better life. No, man, where, where, where you come with? You know, come with nothing? You know, these sort of, you know, in the end of those, and this is real nonsense. You know, you, at that point in time, you have to get serious with your life because this is the main mechanism that takes you to life. The political structure and, and how they administrate it. And that is what taking you to life until your very end. These are the people that is going to go out there and work for you and do what they're supposed to do to make sure you have a better living. So when you ignore that and don't care how that worked out, that's, that's a horrible situation on your behalf. So I, you know, this is why I'm actually so surprised that the people didn't even analyze that within their head and say, well, look, this is what it's going to be. Five years, and we can risk ourselves for five years. It's a long time. What, what is a long time to them here? I, I don't understand. I really don't know what's going on here with this voting structure. It's the mentality, but, you know, we have to just mm -hmm. keep the faith that at some point, at, at some juncture, the electorate will rise up and realize that yeah, but we got rid of the UPP. Yeah. We all have ABLP. But yeah. it's a similar living standard, uh -huh. lack of employment, um, crime, um, water, no water, no reliable water. Your utility bills are too high. Your current is unreliable too. Oh, that's house important. goes on and off. These issues were never discussed at the election. No, 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 no. There were no issues. Yeah, so you know, yeah, that is a major problem when the electorate votes and never even consider the yeah. issues affecting their life. And it's on them. It's not on us. But let me it's tell you something here. Let me say something here. Mm. I, uh, you mentioned that, you know, they got fed up and they moved um, the Labour Party and brought in the UPP. But yeah. you, do you know that in many, many instances I've noticed that people had expected the same sort of behaviour from the, um, the UPP in terms of handing out the way how they, 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 the tenders and so on took, take place, the, all them good stuff. And, you know, it's like the people want it. They want it to be that way. And if it's not on their end, collecting, mm -hmm. they want to put somebody there that is going to grease them up the same way how those people mm -hmm. grease the palms of their supporters. So it comes out that they want both parties to behave the same way. It's not that you know, they're, they're satisfied that the parties are behaving that way. What they're dissatisfied is that they are not on the receiving end. And for, you know, whenever they, 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 they it goes on, the, then the next side, you know, start to think the same way. Look, you know, time for them to move so we can get ours. Mm -hmm. This is not our country, our country's one way. We can get ours. We standardize all these opportunities and stuff like that. Everything just went right. You know, but, you know, we don't want to standardize. Not now. We have one standard procedure. This is how it works. And I'm the government that is going to make sure that everybody follow these guidelines of how it works. 
you know, I have to shift over and you can come by my office to get $1,000. And we had them kind of things, a foolishness. We had. You know, this is just mashing up the country. And, and you know, I, I read an article earlier that is indicating that these things are happening. So it's not only us now in the inside Antigua. It's the international public is also seeing what's going on. Mm. It's, it's crazy, we are. And, you know, it can't be tolerated much longer. I understand. But yeah. Let us end on that area, mm -hmm. that topic. Yeah. Concerning the electorate and what happened on the 21st of March, <laughs> because that's in the past. It's hard to forget, the but the people have decided. Oh yes, I yes, believe yes. in against their own interests. That's right. But we have issues that are hanging over from last year, from the hurricane that we experienced, Irma and Maria. Oh yes, really. and what the prime minister and his bag of hooligans. Mm -hmm are trying to commit this cultural genocide against the Barbudans. Mm -hmm. And they're past their acts now to say that basically that the Barbudans can purchase the land that their family lived on for hundreds of years right. for a dollar. Mm -hmm. And that at the end of the day, they're going to quote unquote develop Barbuda <laughs> so that they can add more revenue to the income. And so they will treasury. be pulling their own weight. Mm -hmm. One of the problems I have with this is the way they use the terms that Barbudans are lazy. Barbudans don't want no better for themselves. The whole idea is when Hitler went after the Jews, he had these general notions of what a Jew was like and what a Jew would do to you. And these general terms are what even the colonials, and I'm talking about the, the, the English Empire, the British Empire, the United Kingdom, how they refer to Africans, our ancestors, that the African is lazy. They don't want any work. The African is uncivilized, and we are going to go to Africa to civilize them. So what you see in the present um, regime in Antigua and Barbuda, first they start off by basically giving a dog a bad name and hanging him for it. Do you agree? Absolutely. Sure, sure. So basically the Barbudans are lazy. They don't want to work. They just want hangouts. They don't want no development. So he is going over to Barbuda or changing the laws so when he goes over there that he can counteract that laziness. And that is what you are telling the people of Antigua and Barbuda about the Barbudans. And the Barbudans have been told that the Antiguans want their land. That is not the truth. It is the government of Antigua and Barbuda that wants their land, in particular Gaston Brown. That is the enemy, and that is the person that you have to stand up with you against. The whole situation in Barbuda is a cultural genocide because they intend to develop this country to wipe out a way of life, communal ownership of land that has existed for hundreds of years. But what we are saying to that is that when you look around Antigua and Barbuda and you see the development that has happened in this country and how they have messed up a lot of the developmental projects, the roads are horrible. The sidewalks in St. John's are horrible. The accounting and transparency of what happened with the fencing scandal and even the roadwork scandal have not come to light up to now. What type of development is acceptable to the Barbudans? Because if you look around Antigua from north to south and east to west, I don't see this country developing on any high standard yeah. or any great quality we too need development we need development that's right i am seeing that the present government is talking about they're going to um do roadworks on fry seal road and when they talk about roadworks i thought i heard them talk about three lane and four lane highway and widening road you know what all of that investment and the british gave us grants and all that stuff to do that the lane pipe there probably be two, two more pipes added to run water to and fro, up and down, pricey road or wherever it's going. That's not development. That was actually money given to you to develop your country. And you cannot tell me the amount of money that the British gave Antiguan government. It's just two pipes on pricey road. You understand that well? Yeah, absolutely. That's where I stand in that I've noticed, you know, noticed that stuff, yeah. And I notice, you know, look, one of the things that I'm so startled about is how they're going about reconstructing Barbuda. Mm -hmm. 
This whole thing is crazy. I th believe that priority should have been getting people's shelters back in order that they can go back and live in there, and you take it from there. You just uh, advance from that and take it to another level. But no, you know, they, they didn't even want the behaviors. They, they didn't even want the people to go back over in Barbuda. They brought them here and they gave them a kind of life that then the people started to, to, to love after a while because then mm. when you have sitting down getting money and not doing nothing, you know, you, you, you're, you're glad for that. But the, who were the cause of that? These people who were supposed to be the administrators of getting Barbuda back together, they are the cause for that. They did not have a plan there. And they still seem to me that they don't have a plan. They're just going about it piecemeal. All right, we touch this today, we touch that tomorrow. You're supposed to put the people back into their shelters. That should have been the priority. You get people roofs back on, you, you know, put back up their structures, you know, maybe not uh, to the fullest of how they would have liked it, but hey, at least you're back on the uh, shelter. And then you take it from there. And this is what then happened there. So you have now about half of the Barbudians still in Antigua. Half, another half is in Barbuda without light and water and all the necessities. And the whole thing just gone here. Why? A bunch of different arguments arises from the whole thing, which is so unnecessary. You even come down now that the land, there, there, there seems to be a land grab. They want the people in land telling them about a dollar. Uh, you pay a dollar and get land and all that. You know, where that is so totally unnecessary, not at that point in time where. That point in time was a tragic moment where people had lost their, their homes, uh, there was a life lost as well, and all that. And, and then they chose that particular time to formulate all these arguments in terms of calling them squatters, time for get off the land anyway, and all that, you know. That was not nice there. And this is what has, this is what have Barbuda in that particular position at this time. And I don't even see how we, they're, they're going to get out of it anytime soon. Most of the monies that, that, that came in to, to, to help um, reconstruct Barbuda, I understand because I was listening to the lawyer uh, up in London who filed an injunction against them going to parliament and doing, making changes so they can do what they like over in Barbuda. And he was saying that one of the, 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 um, the, 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 the uh, serious thing. stuff that was going on there, there is that, that they can't even give account for the money. Mm -hmm. You know, that was one of the biggest problems that he, that he had said because the, the, the reporter was asking, well, how do you expect to to, to, to um, put Barbuda back together, you see the cost and all that. And mm -hmm. then he was telling them, look, there is a lot of money that's been sent uh, to, to aid Barbuda to get back on their feet, and it's unaccounted for. So these are all the different areas that's, that's um, uh, hampering the situation over in Barbuda, and I just do hope that, that the people in Antigua will come to their senses because I've seen them on Facebook trying to justify what the, the, the um, Antigua government is trying to the, to the people of Barbuda and all that, and there is no justification. I've heard all sorts of nonsense on Facebook, where they get land from, who can get that land, who can intend to get that land, and all these sorts of crazy stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, as we mentioned earlier, when you're agent of the Crown, you apologize to the Crown, when you also make decisions for the Crown and all that. So these are all that what was going on with Kajintan in the Kajintan time. Kill a nigger when he feels like killing a nigger and all that good stuff. So he can kill a nigger, but he can't give it a land. I can mm -hmm. understand all that good stuff. But, you know, let's not even uh, dwell on that. It's a horrible situation in Barbuda. This thing needs to be looked at much differently from a different perspective, not from a perspective of development, from a perspective of putting the people back into their homes. And until you take, that's the stepping off. That's where you have to step up, putting people back in their homes, and then you ask them to make contributions. Not that you, you're, you're, you're calling them squatters, but you're still saying that they're lazy. They're squatters, you want them for go and go develop squatters' land. I mm. don't even understand what the problem is. You really. see, what happened is that the standard of development, do the Barbudans really want to get developed by Antigua? No. Because when we talk about development, it's sub-first world standard. That's true. Antigua does not have, has not developed first world standard um, economy or infrastructure That's or sure. our society is so fragmented. That's sure. um, I don't know if a Barbudan, seeing how Antigua has developed 
in the last 30, 40 years would say, we want our country to look like that, to be um, governed like that. Yeah. Even our political Simpson is so behind the times. That's true. But so it's mm -hmm. really, to me, the choice of a Barbudan to say, yes, we're going to have to develop our country because even there are going to be more hurricanes and storm, and we have to make certain that is mm -hmm. developed a past so that develop now so that in the future when hurricanes go we can withstand okay, it yeah. and not be a burden yeah, stronger on anybody. Buildings, all right, but do you want that. that to be developed by the Antiguans or your option which I really believe the Barbians needs to explore is to end the marriage with Antigua that came about be on the 1st November 1981. Yeah, that might be if you do like an Angolan go back to Britain I believe the standard of living the development the fact that um, you are barred with your anti Gambabi passport to get into Canada. That's right, or the places. If you go with as a dependent of Great Britain or the United Kingdom, you won't have that problem. So I really believe that people don't want to hear this. But you have a right to speak out and say you don't want to be part of this union any longer. That's right. Because it's not serving your purpose. They are committing cultural genocide against you and your future generations. Yeah, I saw that at the Commonwealth uh, meeting the other day. They had several Barbudans pick it in there. Mm -hmm. It's a good start, but they need to carry it and, and have a, a, a larger and, and huger impact That's right. and get out their message further. Yeah, the, message the way you're going to do that is more on social media. I believe that can be a constant, and every time you get on international news, they need to sell their argument. That no, you don't want to be part of this unitary state. It has failed you. Yes, um, but um, one more thing, Vera. Yeah, yeah, right. But, um, yeah, you know, Barbuda have a cultural way of life. And, and uh, my question is, does Barbuda want to be developed into a concrete jungle? You know, I, I don't even believe so. Because no, that no but when I say hamper. development by the United Kingdom, I'm saying development based on uh, preserving their way of life oh yes but you know, i believe that the the united kingdom will actually have more appreciation oh yes for, what for they their, their, their cultural living hundred years yes. i wasn't saying development like putting up a whole pile of concrete no no not like an antigua. Antigua. that yeah let me make that clear yeah. because what i'm saying when you look around antigua and barbuda well antigua mm. and you see the development that has gone on here why, Why would a bar be the want that, that for, the, for their future That's right. and the future of their children? I believe there could be um, a lot more respect for the environment, mm -hmm. the beaches, the, the sort of on the development that took place in Barbuda is partly responsible yeah. for what Antigua allowed to happen mm -hmm. with the mining of sand. That's true. How can that develop that country? <laughs> How could that develop that country develop when they were mining sand mm, big time. what about the taxes that you get for all that business that went down there was that going back to barbie mm, was it you know yeah. Yeah, we mashed up there mm. the, the environment over there that's very we much must so. take responsibility that's true but yeah, i wasn't really referring to your what you had said i was referring to the way that they claim they want to develop barbuda yeah, yeah. yeah. you understand that will completely destroy the way of life in barbuda the cultural way of life and this is the way this it's a people and the people mm -hmm. chose to live that way, and they, yeah. they, they, you know, living a, a life. They are living a life, and you decide that you want to just grab all that away from them and and throw on them what you want to throw on them. It's not fair at all, there, and I will never endorse anything like that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's an issue, issue that is really for the Barbarians and Barbarians alone. Mm -hmm. I support them in whatever determination they want for their selves and their children and the future generations and right. the island mm -hmm. i believe what has been happened by this administration in antigua and barbuda is more divide and rule they give everybody names they insult them and they pull people apart there is no national unity national cohesiveness being attempted in this country right now it's basically we have the power we have the money we're in charge so you do what we tell you to do mm -hmm. You understand, and that's so what I'm seeing at the end of the day. Very much so. Um, we have some other information we want to break to you. And there's an article that's online. It's in wantedessay.com. Now, I really don't know who these people are. 
and it's not an internationally recognized um, website or media house. So I will take everything with a grain of salt. But this article that was, I believe, put online in the last 24 hours is entitled Displacement of British High Commissioners in Antigua and Grenada intended to reign in wayward East Caribbean states. So it's saying that it sounds very colonial to me <laughs> because it's basically saying the British are going to come down here to make certain that there is better dealing with our affairs. Um, I'm going to read just a paragraph or two from from this article and then you can chime in with other sections of this article. Displacements yes, of British High Commissioners in Antigua and Grenada intended to reign in wayward Eastern Caribbean. Of welcome news. Wait, let me get from the other, mm -hmm. the other page. I think I missed something here. Of welcome news, as many of the Eastern Caribbean states and Antigua and Grenada in particular have wallowed in what can only be referred to as systematic corruption, and the presence of British diplomats may cause local government officials to reduce their amoral and indeed illegal conduct. Now that strikes me as a bit of colonialism, mm -hmm, a mentality. Yeah, yeah, Anybody more amoral, corrupt, <laughs> and illegal than the United Kingdom, yeah. the British, yeah. for what they have done throughout history? That's right. So you're basically saying um, corruption can fight corruption, oh, immorality can fight immorality. <laughs> I don't, I don't know about that. that. Yeah. If you're going to the, the reader of this, the, the writer of this article, Monty Fraser, Fraser, or Ryan Chuck, or whatever the names is, they need to get serious. It, yeah. Because you're white, does that mean that you're right? Because that you come from the United Kingdom, where on the surface you may think that you have passed the long days of being corrupt or being immoral hmm. and doing a illegality. But I will let Mr. Fraze now, Mr. Rijok, know that in 2003, the United Kingdom chose to wage war against Iraq, an independent sovereign nation, for no good reason. Because you could not even back up. Couldn't justify. Up to now, could not justify you going into Iraq. That is what I call immoral, illegal, and corrupt. So, so when you come in to say Antigua is corrupt, is corrupt which, which I believe it is, but I am here as an Antiguan fighting against it. You are selling us in this article, starting out saying that, that diplomats are coming from a immoral, corrupt, and illegal country like the United Kingdom to go and make us less corrupt. Mm. Mr. Fresner and Mr. Raicha, that is an insult to me as an Antiguan. Very much so. And you need to go back and tell them the diplomats to stop right where they are. Because they don't have anything, a higher standard of ethical practice in the United Kingdom than we have in Antigua and Barbuda. They have political corruption. We have political corruption. They have a bunch of crooks in their government. We have a bunch of crooks in our government. And before you send out diplomats, as you are suggesting, or you believe, I believe you need to realize how corrupt the United Kingdom is. That's so true. Hey yeah, that's so mm. true. I am by no means, I want to say that it's, there's no corruption taking place around here, yeah? because we know uh, what went on over the years, and we see what's still going on there. But the enforcer is what um, uh, we are actually concerned about. And you mentioned that, the, the, and that's a typical example, that Iraq uh, war that they got into, and with no justification of going in there and have the leader got killed mm -hmm. in terms of just to get what you want out of Iraq or whatever the, the reason oil. was. Oh, yes, yes, well. yes, absolute. And that was their bunch of artifacts and all that. They just totally ravished that country. They, they destroyed that country. it. 
They ruined Iraq for another 50 to 100 years. Absolutely, yeah. Iraq was too strong. You know what they stood saying? up against the Americans. You know, and independent too. They the, had their the Iranians. Own. They had what they needed. Yeah. And, 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 and it seems as if that, that these countries, these imperial, uh, let's say countries, large countries, I don't like to see when smaller places are uh, places that they, they don't recognize to be part of them. Uh, a hole in their own. Yeah. Yeah. And they just decide to go in there and take what they want to. And, you know, as I said, they got um, Saddam Hussein murdered. They actually got him murdered. And I've started seeing them did the same thing in Libya yeah. Yeah. and got Gaddafi murdered again. You know, this, this is the kind of behavior of these people. You, you see, know, but, you know. What I would say, Nedwell, mm. is that I am not one to defend Saddam Hussein. He's a damn Oh, yes, yes, too. yes, yes. We don't. And, and Gaddafi is the same way. Yeah. And even more so, this, this punk they have over there in Syria called Assad. Yes, yes, yes. And I know a lot of the, 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 the Syrian community, oh, 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 they love Assad so much. Oh, you better believe that. They are complicit in the nastiness that he's doing over there in Syria also. Murdering people. Because I remember the Syrian community in Antigua when this war in, in Syria started. Mm. Syrian people don't pick it and march in Antigua and Barbie for any issues affecting people in Antigua. You know? mm. Any issues affecting black people, they are separate oh, yeah, they, they, that. They, they are right But that. time um, a black man, Obama, Obama, Obama say you bomb, bomb Syria. Syria. No. But all of them out on the street. Mm -hmm. To me, personally, it's the fact that a black man would actually deal an attempt to bomb Syria. Yeah, I'm saying. Because Donald Trump bombed Syria just the other day. And last year, yes. you know, see you no know, mega man from the streets no, in Antigua. No, yeah, right. they, they kept them out. They, they, they mm -hmm. took their tail between their leg and, and took their bombing. Shot. Took the bombing. I would advise you to continue to do that. <laughs> because, as I said in one of them on uh, Facebook, I no Assad, no rebels. No shawama. That's right. <laughs> the world is better off without Assad <laughs> oh, and the damn rebels. Because me personally, I don't understand how Syrians can say how they love Antigua and black people so much and in a black man country. Right? And you don't even love your own. You murder up one another left, right and centre over there. And you have nothing to say about it in Antigua. Mm -hmm. Where is your concern about the murdering that went on over over 300,000 souls have been lost, half a million? Mm -hmm. You don't see them picketing and they marching. No, there's nothing to that. So I'm here to say, wait, if you can be like that mm -hmm. about your own race or ethnicity, mm -hmm. regardless of if they love or hate or despise Assad, you can just allow that to go by like a, a yeah. drop in the bucket. Yeah. Murder, murder. You know about I, you murder. and me, come here, black man. Me not even, me not even come from the, mid, the, the Middle East. <laughs> so if that had happened to me and if for my country, you would just turn your eyes and step over my dead body. Of course, you are not important. I top there with that, see? You are not important there. But you see, yeah. it's, it's sickening. It's really sickening to see how they just take this thing like the grain of salt. You know, murder, murder, I'm talking about murder. murder the little kids. Uh, yeah. Gas the little and kids. And that's one, two. We talk thousands. Mm -hmm. You understand? So when they Since can... Since 2011, this nonsense going oh, on. Oh, you swallow down that stuff here. Oh, you no, not one of them you hear march or pick it no. or say anything in Antigua no. and Barbuda. No. You hear any it Syrian man in Antigua say, due to the, the, the disrespect and the, 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 the loss of life um, that has been... Accomplished by the the Assad regime. Mm. You hear any of them say Antigua needs to re remove his diplomatic ties? No, man, they don't even care. Huh? No, they still, they still. No, 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 no. Yeah, they still love Assad. They Let still the good times That's rule. Right. This is normal for us. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's really going on when somebody like that is going to become and be the enforcer of us, the corruption that's taken here. Yeah. yeah, it's taking place here. But, you know, really and truly, there's a lot of corruption in Antigua. Yeah. Yeah. And we know that. Without doubt. You know, but I don't know if they're the persons and, and that, that should be, uh, the appropriate people that should be coming and talking that nonsense. Yeah. When yeah. They, uh, and, that, and that is, we're talking about the British. Yeah, the, yeah, British, the British that, that I'm talking about. That, yeah. The author of this article suggested it's going to keep things quiet on corruption. Yeah. Keep things quiet, Rob. <laughs> what about the corruption in the United Kingdom? Uh, it never ever happened there. It's, it's, you know, yeah. 
this has to be an effort. I don't even know if the UN can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I see how this guy handled the UN in Barbuda. Mm-hmm. They were cursed off and all that for being there. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, so this, I, I, I really don't know what's going on in Antigua. I, I believe it's just the people. The people going to have to do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. At, some At some point in time, some they need to stand up for themselves. The people the need, that's right, to show their dissatisfaction about the corruption and all this, whatever is going on, and take the appropriate measures on the day, that appointed day that yeah. they yeah. get to take the appropriate measures. Um, I want to read another part of this article mm. concerning the, di- the British diplomats coming to keep a lid on the corruption. Hmm. Virtually all the Eastern Caribbean states, mm-hmm. right? In all, in virtually all the Eastern Caribbean states, voter fraud, meaning the open purchase of voters during national elections, including flying in expats and students studying abroad to cast their votes for the party in power, is a normal occurrence during a long 20 year history of corruption, usurping the rule of law in the local court systems, using the local police to openly intimidate opposition parties and leaders, and seeking to destroy the reputation of any individuals who seek reform, all add up to an untenable situation in which democracies become little more than banana republic dictatorships. Hmm. Now, uh, Mr. Freisner, F-R-I-E-S-N-E, I hope you get Monty Freisner and Mr. Rijok. Kenneth Rijok. Mm-hmm. Um, all of what you said <laughs> happens in Antigua, happens in the United Kingdom, happens in the United States. Two of the same. Three of the same. Isn't that what is happening right now where they want to display about this, this company? I can't remember the name of the company. How oh, it was using Facebook to get all the personal data. And even the guy for um, Facebook had to go to, to Congress. Yeah, to, to testify, testify yeah. mm-hmm. in that, in that the, they, were they were finding ways using their computers, computers using social, social media, media mm-hmm. to yeah. get into your personal data to find out how to get you to the polls to vote for them. That's right. Isn't, Isn't this happening all over the world? The world? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand how you can go come to lash the Antigua Barbie, the government, when the countries where you come from are just as corrupt. doing the same thing. They're doing the same thing. They're doing the same damn thing. They all have people pay for votes and all them kind of nonsense. The, pri- the, the, the president in the United Kingdom, the president in the United States, Donald Trump, as a candidate, was even telling the Americans, one of the Americans' enemies, Russia, mm-hmm. to go and investigate the emails of his political opponents so they could find out more information. Yeah. In order, in order for her to go to jail. To jail. That is not. Is that, that what trying. the example of a hmm. fair and free election? Getting, getting a foreign, foreign power to destroy your political opponent? opponent? Because, because you did say in this article, and seeking to destroy the reputation of any individuals who seek reform. Mm-hmm. What about Hillary Clinton? And what came over about the Democratic National Committee um, conventions emails? They were hacked into by a foreign power. What about all about that investigation at the end of the day that was revealed by the letter from Comey, mm. the same man that is going down now with Trump because Trump are hammer he, and he was the one that probably more than anybody else individually assisted that man to attain office by going to reveal that there was a investigation that was being conducted by the FBI on Hillary Clinton Mm -hmm. when you could have waited after the election and let that be known. So Comey, I see you now, you're trying to be the good guy. You were just part of the whole mess. Yeah, the same. That is the, the American right. got, uh, political system. He already got what, what he wanted, man. Well, oh, dude, but he's not, yeah, he, he, he thought he was going to get something, yes. something different. Yes, yes, yes. Well, no, the, he, he, he jumped, jumped in, get in there <laughs> and, and Trump <laughs> take him out. That's right. Fired him from the FBI. That's right. You know, so okay. it is all over the world. That's and we're not trying to say the British are corrupt, the Americans are corrupt, so they can't do anything. But, but we just, we just want, want to make it be aware of you are sending corruption, corruption to go and fight the corruption or to keep an eye on the corruption in Antigua. The only solution to this corrupt state of affairs in Antigua and the Caribbean is for the individual elector 
Mm -hmm. Do not be swayed by bribery. Mm -hmm. Do not be swayed by promises of big job and, and traveling abroad and staying at five-star hotels and eating at five-star restaurants. Mm -hmm. It's to say that my country comes before all of that. That's right. And that is so real in Antigua and Barbuda and the Caribbean as a whole. That's true. People want the easy life. People want to get up and see they have 20, 30, 50, or 100 thousand dollars in their account after a year of being a worker mm. and they haven't even showed up on the job. That's right. Or haven't contributed any substantial amounts of effort to grow in this country. That's right. That easy lifestyle. Okay. That's and we're all guilty of that, you know, for the most part. We want it easy for ourselves and our children. Mm -hmm. But at what cost? You're going to make it harder at future generations at the end of the day. But, you know? yeah, but yeah, I'm looking mm -hmm. at the same article here. I've seen the purchasing of votes, the purchase votes, and how they're looking not only at the politician, but actually the electorate. Okay. You understand? I, I want to believe they're calling the electorate um, corrupt as well, because it's a corrupt move. Yeah. Yeah. You are getting money for your vote, and you know that it's, it's, a per, it's usurping the, the rule of law. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, in your, your society, in your community, you know, you're corrupt just as, as, as a politician. Of so the people are uh, just as corrupt, and uh, uh, this is, I think they are, they are actually insinuating this. But, um, you know, I, I, that's the part I agree with, that the people mm -hmm. need to get out of that sort of mindset and do what they're supposed to do. You vote your conscience, you know what uh, that, um, a person's livelihood is supposed to be like and what is supposed to be taking place with the administrators who are administrating your daily lives. And when you see that they're not going down that road, but it doesn't matter. You know, as long as you're getting something to hold them there, to continue that nonsense, it's totally unfair to others there who vote their conscience and are do, trying to do the right thing. You know, and this is the part that, I, that, that really is hurtful, to know that some people are just so contented. You know, they just take a few dollars and it's all right, man, I, you know, and, and sell their votes. So these things are really happening in our community. But again, as I said, the, the enforcer is questionable. We have a questionable enforcer because the enforcers are basically doing the same things as what's going on here. And that is the problem of, of what I'm seeing taking place. Yeah, Again, yeah. I um, don't know if the UN will do, do a better job at that, whatever, but I don't even know because all these things actually goes on into the UN as well. Yeah, yeah we I see mean, this. the whole scandal with the UN yes, scandal. Yes, you see that, a bunch of scandals. All these institutions, international institutions, oh, money have their problems with corruption. Yeah, money, money. But I, I just believe that part of our effort here with our podcast, with, with the True Labour Party, oh, yes, yes. is just educating. saying and informing people yes, that we people. are suffering too much as a small island nation with the level of corruption. That's right. Because I don't believe you'll be able to wipe it out 100%. Hmm. But the levels, the, the over the oh, so way that this yeah. has been done, oh, yes, yes, yes. the amount of monies that are stolen yearly by the government officials and no, there's no watchdog. Look at what happened to the Wadadli Power Plant. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister in his first term several months went on ABS and he said that they were going to come have an investigation into the matter. That was since 2015. <laughs> and up to now, we don't know who is sitting on the board to investigate the Wadadi Post Guard when? scandal. Don't know thing. We don't know when the investigation don't started. Thing about this. We don't know the terms of reference. Nothing. To say, this is what they're going to look into. Is it going to be only an investigation that is done locally in Antigua? Is it going to be an investigation that the scope will spread to China, China where they bought to the stuff? Germany, where makes the, the generators that can tell us what they manufactured when they manufacture it? We don't know. And up to now, we don't have any results of their findings. All of that is just said to fool the public that you are going to do something, and nothing has come of it, and nothing will come of it because they are corrupt. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Sure is, there sure is, boy. Rock in a hard place, that's what you call it, huh? Yeah, yeah boy. We're, we're, we're on a rock. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> And there's no way around. Yeah, man. It's, <laughs> really, it's, really a, hard, it's a rock and it's a hard place. It's a hard place, man. <laughs> Absolutely, man. These people, you know, you're looking for help from the people who are doing the same damn thing. Yeah. You know, I can't even see how that can work out, but 
Let's see what happens with yeah, As we said, we'll just watch people and see. People are of the view that this stuff cannot be solved. Mm -hmm. But I keep telling people, look at the Scandinavian, the, the, the northern European countries, Scandinavia, mm -hmm. Denmark, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Finland, mm -hmm. Singapore. Mm -hmm. These are countries that have reduced corruption to such an extent in their, their country that it's not affecting the bottom line. That's right, the day to day going on. That's to right. any great extent. Mm -hmm. And that is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. That is the level we need to reach. You understand? <laughs> we need to step off and go yeah. forward on that level. You understand? We need, you know, we just standing there and accepting mm -hmm. what's going on. I don't see how we're going to reach that level. Because I don't see anybody, a meaningful person out there trying to do anything about what's going on. You know, like they all accept it. And people in, in the society who you think that, you know, you're up and up and, you know, will be totally against these things says nothing. Absolutely mm. nothing. Yeah. So yeah. it continues time and time again. Time and time again. People need to speak out about these things where, and I notice that people are not doing it. And this is what's hampering Antigua for right now. You know, it's like a test case where they test you and they go as far as this and they listen to hear what you have to If you don't say nothing, they say silence is consent. Yeah. And this is what's happened. We are just consenting to the nonsense that these people are doing. They are making themselves filthy rich. In particular, we watch what happened in Barbuda. You know how many people got rich out of the sand mining there? A bunch of people got rich out of the sand mining and Barbudans yeah. remain poor. And look at what they're calling the Barbudans now. So it seems as if it's the people them, you know, who, who are the perpetrators you, you smile with and the people who have been perpetrated against you ridicule them. And this is what's going on right now within our area. Uh, in this hemisphere, I, and I noticed this article is actually saying Dominica and St. Vincent Grenade is about the same thing and all that that's going on. And I can't believe it's a whole regional thing now. The thing is spreading within the region. And at first, we thought it's just a one place or so. But then you hear that now they're saying that these places operate just about basically the same way. And, I, uh, you know, this is, can't be tolerated here because then we know what part that's going to take us. Yeah, yeah. yeah we lead into, go straight into poverty because one set of people getting all the money, getting rich, and then you have a bunch of people there who can hardly afford life, and that's the part of, a great part of the recipe for a poverty nation. You know, so I don't know how we're going to go about doing this. We will, as you said, we will continue to try and educate the electorate as to what they can do to help themselves because, you know, they, they, they have to do. As you said, we are holding them to a higher standard and the standard that we want a decent way of life. And, and, and you know, that's a standard that we grew up with. And I can't see how we change a basic way of living. That is, has changed so drastically. When when we come when we when I was coming up here, I you know people used to thrive on trying to be decent. Yeah, yeah. You know, decency right now is not a word, a common word anymore. We don't care about being decent and all that. Give me the sub now. You know, me want the money. Give me the cash, and that is you know, and money makes it all and all that. Them this kind of foolishness here. Good name. I remember my, my mom used to use a term there here. Good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. You know, you can get tell a man that now, yeah, but good name and great riches. Throw away this good name, give me the riches. Yeah, and then, yeah, the way how they bought society is maybe that's why it's like that. You know, everything now is money. During that time, they were saying that, yeah, you could have passed by a neighbor, knock at the door and say, give me a drink of water, please. You can't do that now, yeah. you have to buy a drink of water. You understand? So, so the, true. it has changed. The whole thing has changed. People don't look out for people anymore there. It's an all of self situation. It's a situation where people decide, well, look, if me now benefit not from this, me no want not like. I remember I was in Jamaica one time there, and you will ask a person for direction, and he behaves as if he don't know. And you pull out a dollar US, and he takes you right there. You understand what I'm saying? If money not talking, me never want to talk to you. This is what I got out of it. He said, hey, where can you get to so-and-so? And he said, shake his shoulder, I don't know. So he said, wait, and he pulled out the dollar, and he said, wait, anybody can take me the same person. Take you, he just said, you know, but he yeah, would take yeah. you right there, right on the spot. 
So, I, you know, this is a kind of way of life that we have now developing among us, that money takes priority, and, you know, it's all about money. You're not concerned about no good name. You're not concerned about if the place is being labeled as corrupt and all that. That, that lack of concern there is really what is hurting the country. It's hurting us very, very much, and people need to change that particular way of life, change their mindset, and, you know, go back to the, 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 the way of life of what it used to be when people used to care about one another. It's not like that anymore, there. So yeah, yeah. I don't know how we're going to handle it. We, as I um, as mentioned on one podcast before, where a person mentioned that I came back so long, it's time for me to take up the mantle and lead and all that. And we, 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 when the mindset, when you see the mindset that you're up against, right? And then, then, you know, you don't have the kind of resources that, you know, they can even level off the playing field or uh, something like that. So they don't listen to you because, again, as I just mentioned, it all comes down to raw cash. Give me the cash. Mm -hmm. You know, we can talk. Different than that, we can't, you know, we have no conversation here. You know, money will me defend. And these are what people are saying in these times. And you need to change, you know, by the sweat of thy bow, thou shalt eat bread. There's a situation again that I said that um, I read earlier where they were saying that um, yeah, the hospital need they're going to reform the hospital and a lot of workers are going to be weeded out. They call them the bad eggs and whatnot, whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just saying to myself, you know, these same bad eggs are the ones that the political, um, these political the MPs send them there. Mm-hmm. You know, they're political appointees. Yeah, yeah. And when they get on the job there, they have this ment- mentality that the head honcher sent me here, so me do as my like. And they hardly produce anything. They hardly work. They don't work. You understand? So they, 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 it's just how we frame these things. It's what the politi- politician has done over the years. They have created this situation of, of, you know, that, that people, you know, don't even want to work for a living anymore. Yeah. They even have a term for it. They call them ghost workers and all kinds of things. And they encourage things. it. Of course they encourage these things. So this is what makes this country so corrupt that people will support the corruption because you mentioned it earlier. They want an easy way of life. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I know we're going to try our best. We will need to see Antigua move forward on the right path. And if that's not going to be the case, um, well, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the people. What can you say? People you got, are going are to doomed. have to play their part. Of course we'll be doomed. You know, and, and these guys that's there right now, they don't mind that. You know, they, they're just racking up. They get what they can get. And it was said verbally. Verbally, you know, they said, look, enrich yourself, kind of how. And however the public want to take it, they take it. But you tell you to enrich yourself. So you can see that's the priority. So I, I, I don't know. I'm asking the people again one more time to take a look at where we are going. It's very important where we're going. You know where we came from. And as you can see, this article that we just read told you that, uh, you know, these people don't mind coming back right in here and start to enjoy the fruits of our labor one more time. Yeah. They have done it before with the sugar cane. No, yeah, maybe they They've here. done it before with slavery, sugar How you cane, mean? colonialism. That's right. They'd be glad to come just, back um, influencing things in Antigua That's because right. they have the money, they have the military might. Oh, yeah, they have the might. And the British cannot state that they know how to fight corruption because oh, their no, country no, no. is not it's corrupt. Not about fighting they corruption. know how to do it better than us because there's so many issues. And the biggest one is how you go and invade a sovereign state <laughs> because they have weapons of mass destruction. That you don't find, find any weapons of mass can't destruction. Can't find it up until this point. Who is responsible for that? Yeah, murder. Who has gone to jail for the lives that have been murdered? That's taken right. away, lost. That's right. Mothers are going looking for their children. They don't know where they are. They, they bomb no them. No idea. You can't find them. The lost. Mm-hmm. Um. What kind of whereabouts are no. Yeah. Yeah. Eh? Killed in action. action. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is what happened. People stood up for their country over there. That's right. They're not all um, Saddam loyalists, but you no. invaded their country. That's right. And you have in the United States Charter. United Nations Charter that when your country is attacked, you have the right to defend you yourself. You must defend your country, yeah. They were not all terrorists over there. They were not no. all part of some Islamic group. No. They are defending their countries. Rightfully so. Now that we know that it was one big lie, 
is Mr. Blair or Mr. Bush going to jail? <laughs> no, <laughs> for the cri crimes against humanity. No, no. Try to justify might it makes right. That's yeah. just the reality we're dealing with here. That's right. So yeah. what I would say, all of that, not to defend the Iraqis, not to defend the Libyan dictators, not to defend the British. What I'm saying is that it is the Antiguans at the end of the day that will have to stand up. We cannot leave it to some what the great white hope. No, no, some, no, no, some no, 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 no. Um, first world white country is going to no, come no, down no, no. And, no and teach us mm -hmm. how to act hmm? uncorrupt. What can go, sir? In an uncorrupt manner. That's <laughs> not going to happen. When not they are so corrupt. I know in the Turks and Caicos Island about seven years ago, it was so corrupt that, but that was a dependency mm -hmm. that they actually sh shut down the local government and the United Kingdom took over. Mm -hmm right mm -hmm. but we are an independent nation that mm -hmm. can't happen what i'm advising the barbudans to do is to sever this unity with antigua and barbuda and to bid your time build up your country have work for your people so that more barbudans can come back to and to barbuda and with a larger population on that island you mm -hmm. will be able to have defend their independent way. nation state yeah, they'll be able to defend their so way choose. Yeah. That's because right. your country is your island is bigger than St. Kitts or just about mm -hmm. just about similar yeah. sizes right? right yeah no big difference so they should be able to to, to fend for themselves of quite course, well man. Of with course. more population with more investment they mm -hmm. should be fine mm -hmm. and that is the way it is right now ladies and gentlemen um we're already over our hour it's come and gone again Nedwell yeah um, come so I like quickly to have the closing words as usual, I start the opening and you will end. Yes. Go yeah. right ahead. Yeah, again, I do want to tell the people that, um, as you can see, how we are being viewed now from the international, by the international public, you know, it's not all that, um, I'm not making all that of any great importance, but I just want to show you that the international public is now seeing you, the, the, even the electorate as being a corrupt group of people who will sell your votes. And um, been mentioned that even before the election, even before this article comes out, that we can't do that. But I also mentioned to you that when you sell your votes, the person who you sold it to don't owe you anything after that, not even a good job. And all these things I've been saying to the general public. And we need to take these things serious because you know it's it's affecting our lives it's affecting the lives of decency decent people and then you know you need to hold your part and play your part and, you know as i said it's a chain and you're part of that chain you're link and you can't be that bad link that you know you're messing up the whole chain and the whole place the thing just fall apart so i'm asking you ladies and gentlemen to just take a serious look at what's going on take a serious look at how we can be rectified i've asked one one time that if anybody can tell me a better way of of, of helping ourselves than to mix up the parliament and have arguments on your behalf in there different arguments feel free when we are on this um Variety Radio on Saturdays from 1 until 3. You can call in between 2 and 3 o'clock and tell me your views. Share your views with me. Tell me that better way. But I don't think there's a better way than you mix up Parliament and you do what you have to do. Put different um, representatives right in there to argue your plight and um, have a better way of life. So ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our show and we are glad, we are, we are glad to be here with you today. And we are looking forward to be back with you again next week, same time. Yes, definitely. Take care, Antigua and Barbuda. Bye for now. Bye. A buzzer took a monkey for a ride in the air. The monkey thought that everything was on the square. The buzzer tried to throw the monkey off of his back, but the monkey grabbed his neck and said, Now listen, Jack, straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. Ain't no use in diving. What's the use of diving? Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. The buzzer told the monkey, you are choking me. Release your hold and I will set you free. The monkey looked the buzzer right dead in the eye and said, your story's so touching, it sounds just like a lie. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and stay right. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. Breathe, breathe.
Papa, don't you blow your top. 